Thank you so much, Chairman Reynolds, and, and I'm very honored to be at the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. I never thought I would have such an opportunity in my life uh, and to be with such an extraordinary panel. I'm, I'm delighted as well to see that there seems to be an emerging consensus already at this conference about the crucial importance of, of uh, family breakdown in understanding the black situation today. So rather than uh, sort of repeating on a more general basis that on, on that topic, I thought I would give a case study of one city uh, of where I think these issues can be seen very clearly. Uh, and that's to talk about youth violence in Chicago and the political and media response to it. And I think that that response is emblematic of our society's refusal to acknowledge, must much less address, the most important factor behind inner city crime. Last September, a cell phone video of a group of Chicago teens beating a fellow student to death went viral. The press reported extensively on the beating because Chicago's bid for the 2016 Olympics was at that moment hanging in the balance, and because Chicago was so closely associated with the Obama administration. The media ignored the most interesting part of the story, however, the fact that the killing occurred in the very South Side neighborhoods where Barack Obama had so famously worked as a community organizer in the 1980s, in Roseland and Altgeld Gardens. Had the press deigned to take note of that fact, it might have uncovered a tragic pattern of myopia regarding the primary cause of urban violence. When Obama arrived in Chicago in 1984, youth killings were already a way of life. Obama personally observed two young boys casually shooting at a third, he tells us in his autobiography. In 1987, 57 Chicago children were killed by gunfire. But neither Obama nor the political establishment had either the insight or the courage to address the most important context of the spiraling youth violence, family breakdown. 75% of Chicago's black children were born out of wedlock in 1984. While media reports on youth violence occasionally mentioned the mother of the perpetrators or the victim, it was absolutely taboo to ask, where is the father? That taboo continues unchanged today. The Chicago chapters of Obama's autobiography are virtually devoid of adult males. But Obama never makes the connection between the disappearance of the father and the social dysfunction that was engulfing Chicago's South Side. When Obama sees boys engaging in vandalism, he asks, where are the social workers or politicians who will take care of them, not where are their fathers? Not surprisingly, Obama's effect on the South Side decline was exactly zero. Now, I do not mean to single him out for a special criticism. He was no different from any other community activist then or now, or politician for that matter. The pattern of youth crime that was already well established during Obama's Chicago years in the 1980s continued through the next two and a half decades. In 1994, an 11-year-old member of the Black Disciples Gang killed a girl while shooting at and paralyzing a rival gang member. The 11-year-old's gang associates then executed him to prevent him from testifying in court. As always, all the perpetrators came from single-parent homes. And so it was with the Darian Albert beating last September. The 35-year-old mother of the 18-year-old who stomped Darian Albert on the head while he was lying on the ground unconscious, told me that her son's father was, quote, not ready to be a strong black role model in his son's life. The younger brother of that 18-year-old assailant has a different father. He, too, is absent from their home. The father of Darian Albert, the victim, saw Darian once the day he was born and not again until Darian was lying in the casket. Needless to say, 
No one in the media or political class noticed this pattern of family non-formation. It means, however, among many other things, that many children in Chicago are now uncertain about the extent of their family ties. One girl whom I spoke to in Roseland thinks she has 10 siblings by five fathers, but she was not quite sure. Every city in America has a strong connection between race, illegitimacy, and violent crime. And I'm going to put aside for a moment uh, Harry Holzer's quite legitimate questioning of whether we're talking about cause or correlation. In Cook County, the black illegitimacy rate is now up to 79%. So Professor Patterson, it can go higher, unfortunately, than 73. Uh, and presumably, the black illegitimacy rate in inner city Chicago would be higher still. In Chicago, black youth commit 78% of all juvenile gun assaults, though blacks comprise just 35% of the Chicago population. The white illegitimacy rate in Cook County is 15%. White juveniles commit under 3% of all juvenile gun assaults in Chicago, though whites are 28% of the city's population. This disparity is identical in New York. The black illegitimacy rate is over 78%. Blacks commit 80% of all shootings, though they are 24% of the population. The white illegitimacy rate in New York is 7%. Blacks commit less than 2% of all shootings, though they are 35% of the city's population. Nationally, the black illegitimacy rate is around 71 to 73%. Black males between the ages of 14 and 17 commit homicide at 10 times the rate of white and Hispanic males of that same age combined. We're not going to solve the black crime problem unless we can reconstitute the black family. There is no more powerful cause of violence, academic failure, and lack of socialization than the breakdown of marriage. And I would respond to Professor Holzer that the issue is not so much the individual child uh, growing up, having being a teen parent or not, but growing up in a culture where marriage has disappeared that would affect one child and the other identically. The tragic effects of a culture of illegitimacy are not limited to the effects of a father's absence in any individual child's life. The greater problem comes from boys growing up in a culture where men are no longer expected to raise their own children. In such a world, boys fail to learn the most basic lesson of responsibility. Marriage civilizes men. The necessity of wooing a spouse later in life requires boys to develop bourgeois habits of self-discipline. Freed from that necessity, boys never need to become reliable breadwinners and stable adults. There is no greater handicap that affects black children's life, life chances than the fact that they are overwhelmingly more likely than the children of any other racial and ethnic group to grow up with a fa without a father and to grow up in a world where marriage has disappeared. And I would suggest as well that that affects the uh, work prospects as well, that they have not developed those bourgeois habits. We could give every fatherless black child his own social worker and a government check, and we still wouldn't eliminate the crime and achievement gaps. Uh, for a while, it seemed like the candidate, Barack Obama, was, knew this too. Speaking on Chicago's South Side in 2008, he addressed the connection between fatherlessness and youth violence. Quote, if we are honest with ourselves, he said, we'll admit that too many fathers are missing from too many lives and too many homes. And yet when President Obama dispatched Attorney General Eric Holder and Education Secretary Arne Duncan to Chicago in October 2009, in, a, in the hope of diffusing the PR crisis of the Darian Albert shooting, these two administration officials brought only the usual nostrums about a hazy collective responsibility for youth violence and the promise of more federal spending. What I would do is to spend every uh, waking moment of our public policy discourse trying to revalorize fathers, and this will require 
uh, taking on the National Organization for Women, as Professor Patterson suggested. Uh, they hadn't yet arisen when uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan wrote his groundbreaking report. We need to be able to say that, yes, there are fantastic, courageous single mothers who are able, on their own, to raise law-abiding, uh, civilized boys, but on average, Fa boys need fathers, and a culture needs to recognize the importance of fathers, and this is going to require uh, taking on the feminist myth that women can do it all. Thank you very much.